Well, it's been 29 days since the general election. National and Labor have agreed to extend the caretaker government while we wait for a new government to be formed. We know New Zealand First and ACT have met at least twice, so when can we expect an announcement? Incoming Prime Minister Christopher Luxon joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you. Yeah, you too. Have you been involved in coalition negotiations through the weekend? Uh, absolutely. That's been our focus, and uh, we've met and discussed with um, all the parties over the last uh, week or so in, in quite a lot of intensity. We're making good progress, we really are. Uh, there's very good intent from all three political leaders to do, move through this as quickly as we can, but it's important that we do it right, uh, and this week will be a really important week uh, because we have some outstanding issues that we need to get resolved um, and then be able to form a strong and stable government and go to work for New Zealanders, which is what we're, what we're really trying to get to, and I appreciate everyone's being very, very patient with us, um, but I think we've made good progress. It's been 10 days since our special votes were counted and, and delivered, uh, and as I said, there's good intention from everybody, but we do have a few issues to work through this week. Uh, David Seymour said though that those issues could be resolved within the week. Well look I think there's very good intent I mean I have to say I've sat down in, in these discussions with both leaders and their teams uh, and everybody has been very focused and very constructive and very positive. We've had our moments uh, I'm sure we have points of dis disagreement uh, but we've been able to work through that very well and we've got a few more issues to work through the course of this week. Ah, so but you once... haven't really been speaking about issues and disagreements up until now so there's some sticking points. No no what I mean is just that you know there are, you know, we've, we're going through every all three parties' manifestos, so you can just imagine it's a huge amount of work and it's a huge amount of complexity, and it's about understanding each party's position, about understanding where they're coming from, and in that process, it's actually really good because we get a good understanding of each other. Um, but we've got a few more issues and things to work through over the course of this week. But that's quite manageable. It's, I'm confident we'll get there. Uh, we've got goodwill, good faith, and these conversations have been very productive, very constructive, and actually really good to actually form a team um, that's ultimately going to have to work together. I'm not going to ask, although it has been reported that New Zealand First and Act have teamed up with each other <laughs> against National in this negotiation. I'm not going to ask whether yeah, that's I'll, happening because I'll, I know I'll, what I'll, the answer will be, but what no, I will I'll, ask... All I'll just say on that is there's a lot of commentators and a lot of people with reckons and all that sort of stuff, and I just would say to you, yep, yeah, um, not everything you read is true. But are but they getting I'm, along a lot better than they were uh, a week Absolutely, ago? and it's been really important because um, you know, th th there's a lot of commonality between the three parties in terms of our objectives and our goals, and that's why you know, it has been a series of constructive, um, productive talks. That's some but issues also, as but it's well. Also, oh, well, just as we work our way through conversations and make sure, because they're quite complex conversations yeah. around policy issues, for example, um, that require a lot of detail. But it's also been good that ACT and New Zealand First um, have, been, have got to know each other as well. Um, what, when will all three of you sit down? Um, well, again, we've got. Uh, we'll do that. You know, I hope to get make good progress this week. I mean, that's really this week has to Sometime count. Sometime this week. That's what I hope. Yep. When is your cut off for going to APEC? Uh, cut off for going to APEC is flying out Wednesday night. Does that look likely? Uh, I think it's increasingly unlikely, uh, and I and I just say that because I really want to be here on the ground and make sure that we actually um, you know form a strong and stable government. That has to be my job number one. Uh, it would be great to be at APEC uh, for sure. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I want to signal two things at APEC. One would be that New Zealand's open for business and we want to hustle in the world and, and do business and trade with everybody. And then secondarily, it's a chance to get to meet some new leaders with some bilaterals. But yeah. all of that can happen outside of APEC. So, you know, it'd be nice to be at APEC. It's not a must-do. The must-do is actually forming the government. Do you have any bilaterals pencilled in in case you can get there? And uh, you know, what leaders have you reached out to or have, have reached out yeah, to? Yeah, I, I won't go into that because MFAT have still been working through the schedule and the agenda and it does depend as to whether I'm going or whether a representative from the current government is going. Right. Um, and that will, be, that will be shaped very much by uh, who's attending. Um, there's a story and stuff this morning about a leaked email from MB, the, um, the chief executive to staff, and setting out some cost-cutting measures that may be on the table, including a 15% reduction in discretionary spending, voluntary redundancy process, and getting rid of a $27 per person funding for end-of-year functions, so staff would have to pay their own way at a Christmas party. Is this the kind of cutbacks that, that you would be looking for? Well, look, I think it's good that the CEO uh, is registering that, you know, to be to be responsible with money, and I, you know, that's coming actually from the current government who has also issued cost savings across the public service, and, and that, that's, that's very much where that's coming from. Um, 
Uh, I don't think I want to be the Grinch that stole Christmas for people. <laughs> I think we can have modest end-of-year celebrations for, for Christmas. But ultimately, that's a decision for each CEO to make for their government departments. But what is encouraging about that is that there is a, a bending of their minds to understand, look, we need to get value from every dollar that's being mm. spent. And so ultimately, what, whatever is decided is up for CEOs. The, the, the lead large organisations are quite capable of making those decisions without input from the Prime Minister. <laughs> what is a modest Christmas party? So they're looking at $27 per person. Look, again, I, I don't know what, what they do, what their tradition is. Um, that's ultimately a decision for the CEO. Is that I, modest I think, by the time, I think by the time a Prime Minister is commenting <laughs> on uh, what's the right level of Christmas party celebrations uh, or end of year celebrations, um, that's the wrong conversation for me to be do in. You, but do you have your thoughts but what within I'm, the National Party or for your ministers by the time they're ministers at Christmas? Do you have thoughts well, on that? Well, we're going to be working. Thing? So we're going to be working right up to Christmas. So um, that's what I expect them to be doing. But look, I think... But yeah, will there be function? Um, I'm, I'm sure we'll have some end of year celebration for our staff and for our people. But all I, all I respect about that is that's a good sign that actually CEOs are starting to think about making sure they're purposeful and intentional with money, that they're making sure they're cutting out on the waste. That's exactly what we want to start to see. So um, I'm encouraged by that as to what the individual choices and decisions a CEO makes up to them. Would you set a budget for the uh, the Christmas functions? Uh, again, I, I, I just think, <laughs> I, I really want everyone to understand, like, if, if I'm going to spend my time uh, getting into the level of detail about what's the appropriate uh, yes. appropriation for Christmas parties, uh, when we have big CEOs have and big bureaucracies and senior leadership teams of those departments, that's a call for them. And here is a very important thing to ask you about, actually. Um, President Macron has uh, been one of the first leaders to call for a yep. ceasefire in Gaza, and he's asking for other leaders to follow suit. We've had uh, demonstrations here over the mm. weekend that have seemed to be growing, calling for our leaders to say the same thing. What do you say to that? Well, look, I mean, I think every political leader would like to see a pathway to a ceasefire. But here's the thing that people need to understand around a ceasefire. First and foremost, you need both parties to agree to want to be in a ceasefire. Two, it actually has to be across the whole of the geography of the region. And three, it has to be into a pathway that gets you into a uh, diplomacy and into peaceful resolution. And the harsh reality of it at the moment is neither Hamas or Israel actually want a ceasefire. So we can call for it and we can keep pushing towards that pathway. That is important. But what is important right now is those humanitarian pauses that we've seen taking place over the last few days that we've called for. Uh, that's important. It's making sure that you know Hamas should be releasing the hostages and not using civilian shields. And Israel and Hamas both need to act within obligations of international law, humanitarian law. So, you know, we, you know, ultimately, let's be clear, military action is not going to deliver peace in the Middle East. It's going to be restarting the Middle East peace process. Um, and so, yes, we'd like to get to a pathway of a ceasefire, but a ceasefire actually requires both parties wanting to do it. It has to cover the whole jurisdiction and it has to actually be a pathway into a diplomatic process. OK, I'd better let you go because will you be meeting with um, Winston and David today? Well, I'm sure we will be. <laughs> yeah. Today? Well, I'm sure, no, no, no. We'll be meeting. Just we have a series of ongoing meetings that literally <laughs> okay. goes. We've we finished at 2 a.m. on Saturday morning and um, a late night on Saturday as well. So, um, no, it's just been, it's been full on. But it's been a very productive, good process. Uh, we're getting to know each other very well through those conversations. I know New Zealanders want us to get it resolved, but I'm not just signing up with some flatmates. I actually have to sign up and form a strong, stable government. <laughs> so we're going to do it right and that's, we'll make progress this week. Eight to seven. Thank you very much for joining us. That's incoming Prime Minister Christopher Luxon.